friends, welcome back to the channel. I've been entertaining you a lot with different kind of videos about interesting personalities coming from Norway and I decided that as long as you like this kind of topics, I will try to do something new. And if this kind of format will get a lot of views, a lot of likes and new subscriptions, I'm definitely continuing this, so it's all up to you. So, this playlist is going to be about people you most probably did not know existed. At least, this is how I think I will call this kind of playlist. If you have some better ideas, write down in comments and I will definitely consider that. So the idea is that I am going to tell you different interesting stories about people you might not know existed, but they have achieved something, they have created a revolution in some kind of field or whatever. So anyways, I think you will enjoy these stories. And today's story is about the person that actually created a revolution in clothing. And yes, I'm 100% sure that you will find that piece of clothing in your closet. Yep, it's denim. So yeah, the story is going to be about first blue jeans creator and it's not Levi Strauss as you might think. What? Well, he played a very crucial role in creating these first blue jeans, but Levi Strauss is only the tip of the iceberg, like the person that we all know. But actually there were two people and the second person played a very important role in creation of these jeans and he was Latvian. So yeah, now please open the map and check out where Latvia is because a lot of people do not actually know where it is or sometimes they're just confusing it with Lithuania. No, Latvia is Latvia. Now open the map. The story is going to be about Jacob Davis and you most probably did not know that actually he is the one who created the blue jeans. So the Levi's blue jean story is actually a story about two immigrants moving to America and pursuing the American dream. The two men were Levi Strauss and the lesser known Jacob Davis, who at that time was a working American tailor in Reno, Nevada. So Jacob William Davis. He is Latvian and this is his story. He was born in Riga, Latvia in 1831. Then he immigrated to the United States in 1854. He moved around the West extensively, trying to make a living through in the 1860s. In 1870, Jacob settled in Reno, tailoring fine clothing and manufacturing items such as tents and horse blankets from a sturdy cotton fabric called duck with copper rivets for added strength. The copper rivets will play an important role later on, so please bear with me. Jacob officially became American citizen in 1871 and this is why we most probably uh, know about him as that other guy who invented jeans and not as that other guy from Latvia who invented jeans. In the late 1870s a lady came to Davis and asked him for a pair of cheap uh, pants for large husband who had a habit of going through pants quite quickly. Having found that thread only uh, did not keep the pockets to the pants quite adequately, he decided to try out rivets on the pockets. He was working a lot with horse blankets and rivets did quite well on these horse blankets. By 1871 Davis was routinely using rivets on the pants he made first on duck, soon after on denim, but we will get to that soon. And then he noticed that he was imitated by other competitors. He shared his idea with Levi, a fabric supplier in San Francisco. He asked him to become a patent partner and help him with a large-scale manufacture for these innovative pants. Levi Strauss was born in 1829 in Franconia region of the Kingdom of Bavaria in the German Confederation. At the age of 18, Strauss traveled with his mother and two sisters to the United States to join his brothers Jonas and Louis, who had begun a wholesale dry goods business in New York City. Levi Strauss became a citizen of America in 1853. Then he moved to San Francisco and opened his own business, 
Levi Strauss and Co., where he was selling the goods that he imported from his brothers in New York. Now back to the blue jeans uh, that were created by Latvian in blood, but American on the papers. So as I mentioned, uh, Jacob Davis uh, contacted Levi Strauss. Mainly, he wrote him a letter, and I'm going to quote a little bit of this letter. My neighbors are getting jealous of this success, and unless I secure it by patent papers, it will soon become a general thing. Everybody will make them up, and there will be no money in it. Therefore, gentlemen, I wish to make you a proposition that you should take out the letter's patent in my name as I am the inventor of it. The expense of it will be about $68 all complete. And for these $68, I will give you half of the right to sell all such clothing revited according to the patent. On May 20th, 1873, the patent for improvements in fastening pocket openings was issued. And it was issued for Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss and Co. And so the first riveted jeans known as blue jeans were officially created. But I should mention that these jeans are not like a stylish thing as we might think. At that time these jeans served only uh, for workers because the material was very uh, strong, it uh, didn't wear out, so it was more or less only for that kind of people. Levi actually invited Davis to come to San Francisco and oversee the manufacturing of riveted jeans for Levi Strauss and company. Around 1907, Davis sold his interest in the patent and the manufacturing to Levi Strauss and Co., but he continued to supervise the Levi Strauss factory until his death in 1908. In 2006, a marker was placed on the site of Davis's tailor shop on Virginia Street in Reno, Nevada, to honor him and his invention. Jacob had eight children, five sons and three daughters. His descendants uh, founded Ben Davis Company, which is also a clothing company. Ben Davis is the founder of Ben Davis Company and he is uh, Jacob's grandson. Jacob William Davis, who played a very important role in creation of the first riveted blue jeans, died in 1908 in San Francisco. He is resting in peace with his wife Anne. As I already mentioned at the beginning of the video, jeans were created for workers. These were miners moving out to American West, also different farmers, builders, whatever, just hard-working people. And, by the way, some of the jeans that belonged to the miners of that time were actually found by archaeologists. Yesterday we was down this shaft here, it goes down 220 feet, and we found um, six pair of Levi's dating back to the 1800s, from 1870 and 1890. There's only five known pair in the world. Um, there was one pair that was sold for reported $50,000, so... Super, super old, old pair of jeans. Those are, those are jeans too? <laughs> Little did the miner know and he took that pair off it. Another pair? Okay, yeah. look, these are the... Uh, number three before 1880 so this these three pair are the oldest Levi's in existence and that's more than have been found ever but later on jeans were not only about working clothes they were about style. An interesting thing is that a crucial role in making jeans a style thing was to movies in 1939, visionary director John Ford made a film Stagecoach. It was smashing success and made the relatively unknown John Wayne a star. In that movie, Wayne wore Levi's and, historically accurate or not, his outfit would typify a generation's image of the cowboy. Westerns became one of the most popular movie genre in American cinema. Everyone wanted to be like Western uh, heroes and wear those jeans. However, then World War II started and Jeans again became uh, working clothes uh, because uh, these were worn by people working in different factories. The rebirth of jeans as style element again started after the war ended. 
Jeans were popularized as casual wear by Marlon Brando and James Dean in their 1950s films, particularly The Wild One and The Rebel Without a Cause, leading to the fabric becoming a symbol of rebellion among teenagers, especially members of the greaser subculture. And of course, Elvis, the king, he came out with a movie Jailhouse Rock and the type of jeans that he was wearing in that movie became a huge sensation and everybody wanted to wear jeans after that. Here's a fun fact about Elvis and denim. He may be associated with jeans, but he never wore it outside movies. It reminded him of times when working men's fabric was all he could get. From the 1960s onwards, jeans became common among various youth subcultures and subsequently young members of general population. Nowadays, they are one of the most popular types of trousers in the world. Now let's talk about logo. Actually, the logo that we are all used to see uh, is not the first logo of the company. The first to appear was a two-horse logo. That actually showed two horses pulling apart a pair of jeans. This is kind of illustrating how strong actually the jeans are and that nothing can kind of break them apart. And this is why at that time everyone was referring to jeans as a two-horse brand. It serves for two purposes. One is to really show the quality and strength of Levi's. The other one is having a very recognizable branding element so that people in the 1880s, early 1890s could walk and be like, I want the pants with the two horses. By 1936, competitors had started imitating Levi's jeans and their arcuate stitching, so the brand decided to sew a little red tab into the back pocket seam to distinguish them from replicas. And then they finally rebranded the Levi's uh, logo in the 70s and it changed quite a lot. It took a shape of bat wing and actually there was a purpose of creating this kind of bat shape. The bat arch is actually a stitch on a back pocket. Brand name was written in capital letters in Levi's logo, while E had to remain lowercase according to branding rules. Levi's logo font is original too. That implies you cannot use it for your own commercial purposes. It is prohibited by copyrights. And yeah, this is it for today's video. Please let me know in comments down below how did you like this kind of format, uh, telling you about interesting historical uh, persons in the world. I still have quite a lot uh, in my mind that I could tell you about. And yeah, I would be very grateful if you write down your review or your suggestions down there below in the comments. So again, huge thank you for supporting my channel, uh, subscribing and writing down in comments, putting your likes. And for those who are watching this video, please make sure to press that subscribe button, to press that notification bell, because you don't want to miss out my future videos. If you haven't seen my other videos, make sure you stroll around in my channel and I am sure you will find something beneficial, something entertaining and something interesting for you. Yep, yeah, that's it for me. See you next time!